In 1907, 11 scientists held the first meeting of the American Association for Cancer Research in a single room at Cornell University. From this seed, the organization they founded has grown into the leader in research for cancer prevention, detection, and treatment. Today, fueled by strong leadership, a clear mission, and deep commitment, the AACR has become a vital force in cancer research and education worldwide. AACR acts as, a, I think, a facilitative force for people to come together, and they do it in so many ways. AACR is about discovery. It's about knowledge, and it's about the continuum of knowledge. So it is the catalyst. It's the engine for science and discovery. The AACR is a critical force in cancer research and our opportunity to ultimately control this disease. This is an organization that, that really stands for a very, very strong tradition of research in cancer. Today, the AACR has almost 29,000 members from over 80 countries, representing the full spectrum of biomedical and scientific specialties involved in complex research to find the causes and cures for cancers. The key to the AACR is the AACR attracts the youngest, brightest, freshest faces in the cancer research enterprise, brings them together with established researchers, famous scientists, and the like. That mixture is magical. The annual meeting remains the heart of the AACR's program. Throughout the years, 35 Nobel laureates have presented papers, and many of the most important cancer research discoveries of the century were first presented at this meeting. This is a wonderful event for me. You can imagine. The theme of this year's meeting is translating research into practice. And when we inject them into the mouse, they actually don't form very many tumors, very few. It is international. You get to meet people from all different countries, which is a wonderful experience. It's, uh, I think, unquestionably, it has the highest impact factor of the, uh, all the different organizations working in cancer. It's a wonderful exposure to excellent science, and it's a wonderful way to meet the people who have really driven the field of cancer research. The energy from the ACR meeting, for me, comes from the unexpected. You walk by a poster, you see something you never realized existed. You get an idea based on something that uh, an individual presents. But the annual meeting is only a small part of what the AACR is today. Its special conferences, think tanks, and workshops addressing the most critical scientific topics in locations all over the nation and the world. Dynamic partnerships with other vital organizations. The San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium, the Love Avon Army of Women, and Stand Up to Cancer. AACR is a scientific partner in the Stand Up to Cancer project, where over $100 million was raised to fund translational cancer research. Special programs for women, minorities, young investigators, and students. AACR reaches out very well to the communities with the development of Minorities in Cancer Research Council. I think that this is a nice vehicle for bringing together many minority scientists and non-minority scientists who want to address minority health issues in the country. Women in cancer research play a very vital role, not only for women already in their careers, but for women who are just coming up through their careers. I think they can help by offering leadership workshops, by being mentors, by being advocates for women, by being role models. The AACR publishes six top scientific journals, including Cancer Research and CR, a magazine about people and progress in cancer. Support for advocates, including the Scientist Survivor Program. Funding for basic, clinical, and translational research. Awards and prizes for the best in cancer research, for public service, and for contributions to public education. Today, science changes at a pace more rapid than those first 11 pioneers could have imagined in 1907. A lot of people think this research is about science. It's about the patient. 
they have a seat at the table, whether it's in the design of clinical trials, whether it's in quality of life, whether it is how this research impacts them. And the only way we're going to do this is if we all work together. The Scientist Survivor Program is a great way of educating um, advocates about the science, but then also educating the scientists about what's important to the survivor community and the family community. We're at a very important inf inflection point in the field where great discoveries are being made and can be brought to the care of cancer patients almost immediately. So the clinical trials of a new inhibitor just opened in January targeting the sonic hedgehog pathway in medulloblastoma. I'm very fortunate here. I work very closely with Dr. Peter Phillips in trying to manage this, this translational enterprise so I can bring things from the lab environment and then actually talk with him about the design of clinical trials to bring new therapies to the clinic. The gap between the lab and the clinic is narrowing. When you're first diagnosed, the world stops. And I, I keep, you know, I've been told I have cancer numerous times, so my world keeps stopping. So I chose a clinical trial because this one looked promising. And after eight weeks, uh, my tumors had shrunk. And so I take my nine pills twice a day, and I'm thankful for the research. With more than 100 years of history on which to build, the AACR continues to evolve to grow, we still share the drive for new knowledge, the vision of a future free of cancer that brought that handful of researchers together in 1907. It's really a confluence, a time of confluence, where I think what we do now in the next five to eight years is going to determine the future of what cancer is going to become. And I'm hoping, and I think I'm planning on the fact that cancer is going to become history. So a donor, through contributions to the AACR is accessing talent across the country and across the world. The AACR, through its national and international reach, can bring together the best groups, the best complementary groups, to advance the problem most rapidly. Today, over two-thirds of patients diagnosed with cancer are actually cured and go back to a normal life. That's an incredibly exciting advance, but we still want to get to the third that are not cured, and that's what gets us up every morning and the AACR plays a critical role in that. And I would thank the researchers for, uh, for choice, that it gives us another option and it gives us hope. The outlook for cancer patients today is far brighter than it was a century ago, but we still have a long way to go. At the AACR, we never lose sight of our mission to prevent and cure cancer. We never forget why we do cancer research for the benefit of patients today and tomorrow.